Do you have a scary intro song? Yes, there is a scary intro song currently playing. Excellent. I want to say it's specific to the concession stand Spooktacular, which uh, gets played every year whenever we do one of these. We always make Excellent. sure to bring concession stand back right around Halloween. Because <laughs> <laughs> spooky movies are good. Exactly. And also, this is a special thing because this is also going to be uh, night four. Hello, everyone. I started recording already. <laughs> this is for night four. <laughs> Of the 13 Nights of Halloween, the special thing I'm doing where I'm constantly uploading something for Halloween <laughs> that is usually horror related. For the most part, it's just been Luigi's Mansion and Sweet Home so far. Hey, ghosts are scary, sort of. Yes, exactly. And you gotta do, yeah, make best with what you do. My internet is <laughs> not the greatest, so it's a miracle I was able to get <laughs> Luigi's Mansion in general. Um, but yeah, this is going to be going up for night four and, I, and, uh, I, man, I forgot. I completely had this all. It's so hot right now and I'm tired <laughs> because I came home from walking. Uh, what I was going to say, this is the, the video for night four. And if you, uh, like this, you should like it give a like, slap a like on that like button <laughs> and leave a comment. I think right now I'm still getting used to this part of the stuff that will, <laughs> there we go. And I'm here with Zenrod. Hey everybody! Hey, I think I'm here. Yeah, I think this was the greatest way to bring back concession stand. Is kind of in a rambling it's very way, very on brand. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, now I know last concession stand we said uh, we would go back, uh, we would come back, and we would see. Um, oh man, I re- I remember. Sorry for bothering you. The problem is, is that it's very hard to get uh, us to watch a movie at the same time. <laughs> I had already to do. It has to be very convenient. <laughs> it does. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Or actually, extremely well known because that. Uh, sorry for bothering you. Is on Hulu. Zen just chose not to see it. Oh, it is. I don't even remember that. But also, I don't think they've had a concession stand in like six years. So yeah, it's been a very long time. And to be fair, I have to remind you. Otherwise, it's really my own fault. <laughs> I should know at this <laughs> That's point. That's also true. That's also true. But we're back today, and we're here to talk about since it's a spook, it's the spooktacular is going to be a horror movie. Some people would consider "Sorry for Bothering You" a horror movie, but that's not neither here nor there. Today's movie is, of course, Evil Dead Two. Uh, now, before I get into the summation of it, Zen, before I asked you to see Evil Dead Two, had you ever seen Evil Dead Two? I had seen the original Evil Dead, but not Evil Dead Two. Mm, okay. And for let everyone else know, I've seen Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2, uh, Army of Darkness, the remake of Evil Dead, and then I've seen at least season 1 of uh, the Evil Dead TV show. I have to go back and actually see the other seasons. That It's not, I, I didn't stop watching because it was bad, I, just, I stopped watching because it took a while for it to come to Netflix. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So let's get into some Evil Dead 2. So I love Evil Dead. And uh, so that's why I chose this one to be it. And if you've never seen Evil Dead 2, holy shit, you should watch Evil Dead 2 is my summation of it. Uh, But let me get into the plot real quick. Okay, so the movie opens up with what is basically an extremely abridged version of the events of Evil Dead 1. (laughs) Um, Ash and his girlfriend go inside a cabin. They listen to tapes. Uh, I think it's just like some random abandoned cabin that they found, right? <laughs> they just like find yeah, the Yeah, she's just like, are you sure the cabin's abandoned? And he's like, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that sounds like Ash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> More or less. And I literally watched this movie like right before recording this. So I'm very <laughs> up to date on exactly what happens. Perfect. Uh, when they get inside the cabin, Ash finds a tape from an archaeologist, and he plays it, and of course, inside it, it's reciting uh, passages from the Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon. Necronomicon. Fucking Necronomicon on the fucking radio. Yeah, then he reads the Necronomicon <laughs> through the radio, uh, which the archaeologist has discovered, and then of course, because the incantation has been said, the evil forces are like, we'll allow it, and they get unleashed. <laughs> And so uh, they apparently just recording the incantations is enough. Yeah. Um, this turns uh, Ash's girlfriend Linda into a deadite, and then he's forced to kill his girlfriend, like bury her with a shirt. And he has to like do a lot to kill her, from what I remember. He's like full on no. <laughs> whacking nope. her with the shovel. No, nope. just a one swing decapitation. Really? All right. Okay. Maybe I'm thinking yep. of something else. Yeah. But either way, he, well, he okay. So. He he decapitates her and buries her, but then she comes back later, and they have like a long fight scene. Okay, okay. Um, 
So it, it it reaches dawn. This is basically that all happened at night. It's about to hit dawn. Uh, Ash is about to leave when all of a sudden he gets possessed by a demon. But then right when he's getting possessed, day breaks. So basically the evil gets like <laughs> the evil is afraid of the sun. So it leaves him alone and he returns to normal. But then I think he then ends up just like uh, he tries to leave. But then the bridge is out. So he has to return back to the cabin. Um. Yeah. No, where he gets chased back to the cabin? The bridge is down. He can't get across. So he goes back to the cabin because it's safer than being in the woods. Because if you're killed. Yeah, that's true. And then this is when uh, his girlfriend's head comes back to attack him. And yes, it bites his hand. That, that night, right. Yeah. Uh, then he... I think this is after the head attacks him, bites his hand. He then takes a chainsaw to her head and <laughs> kills the head. Yeah, he, he takes the first of many conveniently placed chainsaws. Yeah, there's, uh, a lot there's, of there's like a weird claymation, like Jack Skellington dance scene, where the the decapitated zombie body is like dancing to freak him out, and it's doing like stripper dances on a tree, and then it grabs him, and they start fighting, uh, and then he is fighting the body because the body actually kicks the door, like like he's fighting the head because the head's biting his hand, yeah. and he puts the head in a vice to get it off of his hand. And then the body kicks the door in and is holding a chainsaw. <laughs> and it rushes him with the chainsaw. And he deflects the chainsaw with a crowbar and it flips around and it sticks in the body. And then he's wrestling the body that has chainsawed itself. And then he gets the chainsaw away from it and he cuts the head in half. Fine. And then the, this is finally, that's the end of his girlfriend. Uh, and then after that, his hand turns possessed because it was bit, I'm going to assume because she bit him and now Ash starts fighting his own hand and he decides that the, the only way to defeat his hand is to chainsaw it off. This does not destroy his hand, by the way. It just kind of removes it from his body. Yeah, it's still there and still evil and possessed. Yes. But it's, it's not on him anymore. Yeah. And then I think this is also the part where he uh, finds a shotgun and he starts shooting at his hand. But the hand is like kind of like um, Jerry from Tom and Jerry and just fucking with him. It literally goes into a mouse hole and then like uh, it starts fucking around like he shot it. But then he didn't actually. And like it gets in a mouse trap and then it flips him off. <laughs> it literally like his own hand flips him off and then it runs into the wall. And he has he's having like. A total mental breakdown the whole fucking time trying to shoot his hand. Yeah, and then he finally shoots what he thinks is the hand, and then blood all over him for like a solid thirty seconds. Oh, that's right. He shoots the wall, and then just a buttload of blood just comes right at him. Yes. And then while this is happening, the archaeologist archaeologist's daughter is. You see her, and she's with her research partner, and they're basically returning to bring back the missing pages of the Necronomicon, and so they're gonna start going to the cabin. But that's when they find that the bridge is destroyed, and then they take two local people, and uh, I believe their name is Jake is Bobby, and they guide them to the cabin. <laughs> and <laughs> I think while this is this is to be assuming that when Ash is fighting his crazy hand and losing his mind, they're just kind of casually going to the cabin, and they also think that his father is alive, by the way. So they're just kind of going. Uh, they like, they expect to walk in and see her family. Yeah. Uh, what they end up seeing is that Ash hears a noise outside the door, and he takes a shotgun to the door and immediately oh, shoots. No, it. you're not. You're not properly selling how great the scene is, is that causes him to shoot the door. Oh, okay. So this when is he's the... having a fucking meltdown with everything in the house laughing at him, like all the furniture and like the shot deer head that's mounted on the wall. And okay, everything yeah. This is, is all like he's having a laughing match with the house. This is my favorite scene of the entire movie. That's when he just hears a laughter and then it's the deer and then it's the entire house. And then eventually it's just him and everyone's just laughing. laughing at the situation. Everyone's laughing. And I want to say, then he hears a knock at the door, then he shoots the door. And that's what kind of brings it all to an end. Cause he hears a woman scream. Because he, he hears the actual people. Because he shoots uh, Bobby Joe in the arm. Yes, he does. Uh, he doesn't end up killing her. He just ends up kind of <laughs> missing with the shotgun somehow. It's weird, because uh, they, they make a point that he hit her. But then that just kind of never, never comes up again. I guess he just grazed her on the arm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, to be fair, they do tr think he's like a crazy hillbilly. So then at this point, he opens the door. I don't think he sees anyone. But then they uh, basically are able to take him down. They assume that some crazy man has killed the family inside. Um, and at this point they say, we're going to throw him into the cellar. So they throw him into the cellar 
and um, the other four decide to start looking around, and that's when they find the recordings. They play with the recordings, and that's when they learn that uh, the archaeologist, his her father, has killed her mother, and he couldn't bring herself bring himself to decapitate her, so he put her in the cellar. And at this point, Ash realizes that he's he's woken up after being knocked down. I want to say when he fall when they put him down the cellar, doesn't he bump his head down the way? He comically falls down, like, the entire flight of stairs and, like, breaks a bunch of stairs over his head and shit. Yeah. One moment. Uh, sorry, everyone. We're back with that. And then let's see. Where were you? So, yeah, he comically falls down a whole then, bunch of uh, Yeah, he's in the, the fruit cellar right now. Yeah, he's in the fruit cellar. Then he learns that there's a deadite inside the fruit cellar with him, and that's when he starts banging on to let him out. Also, before they put him in there, he's trying very badly to explain what's been going on, but he's like, he, the reason they think he's a crazy person is that he's just kind of going like, uh, uh, no, no, like, he's like trying very badly to say like, no, you don't. He understand. like just got well. One, he went through that whole night prior, yeah. and two. uh uh, one of the guys that tackled him punched him in the face, so he's like out of it. Yeah, he's out of it. Uh, but he wakes up for the cellar, and then he starts banging, and that's when the mom comes out and starts attacking him from inside, or at least tries to get him, right? Uh, yeah, she's like menacing him, because he's on the stairs at the door. Yeah. They let him out, and then they go in, and I want to say this is when the mom... <laughs> is this... It's, I forget, is this the deadhead that has like the weird fucking like turkey head? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It's the one that... that... That makes the weird turkey face. Yeah, the, the, the swallow it's your the soul, mom. swallow your soul. She doesn't say that until the end. Okay, but it is the same one. Uh, I forget when the, they're going through this. Is this when she, her eyeball comes out and it goes inside one of the ladies' In mouth? her daughter's mouth? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is extremely. So, so she, so the mom comes out, mm -hmm. and they manage to undo the door to get uh, Ash out before she can kill him. And so she's like holding the thing up and she does the thing the demons do where they, they make themselves look like the person that they're supposed to be. Yes. So she's like singing to the daughter and everything and Ash stops her from letting her out. Uh, and so the mom like reaches through the crack and I think he grabs the hillbilly guy mm -hmm. and she starts attacking him. And uh, to get her away from him, Ash comes over and stomps on the uh, cellar door mm -hmm. to knock her back down. And in the process, it squishes her head which then shoots the eyeball out and it goes into her daughter's mouth. Ugh. At this point, one of the yeah, ladies wants... It has a long, comedic, like, slow-mo shot of this eyeball flying through the air at this woman's mouth and it yeah. goes in her mouth. She also does a big gulp. And that's gulp. it. She does a big gulp, yeah. too, doesn't she? She goes like... Vroom. She swallows <laughs> it. But she has, like, a like a gagging, like, a gag-retching reflex to yeah. it. I don't know if she swallows it, but... Something like that. Yeah, either way. At this yeah. point, uh, the lady who is not the daughter just says, fuck this, and leaves. And she immediately runs out into the forest, and that's when she gets attacked by... Oh, not yet. Not yet? Close, but not yet. Okay. Um, It is sort of the same? No, 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 because we skipped over the partner getting possessed and killed. Oh, yes. He gets possessed. He turns into, like... Like another weird one. All the demons look different for varying reasons. Like the girlfriend just kind of looked like a scary looking lady. Yes. Uh, the mom is a turkey, and then the research partner it has like no nose. He just like has like his mouth is like a toothy vagina mouth. It, it's weird. <laughs> yes, this is what he gets. Yeah, he gets possessed, and Ash uh, cuts him apart with a hatchet. The girl that runs the the hillbilly girl is like. Um, you're squeezing my hand too hard talking to her boyfriend. And he's like, well, I'm not doing it. And she looks down and it's Ash's uh, cut off hand is, is holding onto her hand. All right. That's when she runs off. That's though. what makes her run into the woods. Yeah. Yeah. And then her hillbilly, then, then she gets attacked by the tree and that's what does her in. Um, and then when they're inside, I want to say Ash is just like, well, if she's out there, she's dead. So we're not going. And then her boyfriend's like, no, we need to go save her. And then he's like, no, you're being an idiot. And this is when they decide that I think in order to stop the deadites, they need to get the translated pages. And so they decide they're going to read the pages and then this will stop basically what's happening. Um, nobody was noticing where the shotgun was. So, of course, the hillbilly now has the shotgun. And he had shotgun. He tells them, we're going to go save her. They try and tell him, no, that's dumb. We need to stay here and read the pages. And then he says, fuck your pages. And he throws it into the cellar with where the bomb's at. And he says, we're going to go get her. So then they start to go look for her. And then when they're looking for her, I want to say Ash gets possessed again. 
And then this is when... Yeah, yes. Uh, Ash gets possessed by the whatever demon. Yeah, the, the whatever the Kandarian demon. Kandarian demon. Kandarian demon, there you go. Um, I want to say, does he take out Bobby uh, Bobby Joe at this point, or does he just knock him out? No, Bobby Joe is the girl who gets killed by the trees. Okay, so I'm thinking of Jake um, then. Jake, yeah. So he, he attacks Jake, but does not kill him. Okay. And then he, he starts... attacks Jake, and then he starts chasing Annie. Yeah, they. she goes to the cabin, and then she gets ready to, like, attack him if he comes near him, and then who the first person that comes into the cabin is Joe, so she, Jake, so she stabs Jake. She stabs him in the stomach, yeah, with the with the dagger that I did not know existed prior to this. Yeah, I don't know where and she... And just has the, the, it's the Kandarian dagger, she just all of a sudden has it. Yeah, it, um, might, it might have been somewhere in the background somewhere, but I really did not notice it until she had it. It was, and no one ever talks about it before yeah. this point. Uh, and then when he, after he gets stabbed, he gets too close to the cellar door, and then he gets straight up, like, uh, dragged into the uh, into the cellar door, and then she just, like, basically, like, creates a giant bloodbath from it. Yeah, it's like a fucking blender. Like, he's, like, he's exploding blood out of it. Yeah. Uh, so then, um, the possessed Ash tries to kill Annie, but then he returns to normal when he sees a locket of his girlfriend, um, uh, the one he killed, and then Annie, I think, still doesn't believe it, and I think is trying to shoot him, and then he goes like, I'm alright, I'm alright, and then after he says, I'm alright, she attacks him one more time. Yes, so she has the axe, not the gun. Yeah. Um, and she's trying to get him, and he pushes her off, and he's like, I'm alright, I'm not, you know, the thing's gone, I'm alright. And so he he leans back against the wall for a minute, and he lets out like the the relief exhale. And then you see the axe cover up the frame because she swings it at him again and hits the wall next to him. And it's really they have a second wrestling match over the axe after that. I've caught it with her at this point. I would also just not believe if this thing could possess whatever. I would not believe it at all. I think she's completely justified because remember it. The, did the thing with her mom earlier where it turned back to normal yeah yeah so you just to be sure at this point okay so they now decide like all right let's do it we have to go down there and get um the pages back if we're gonna stop this and the way that they decide to stop this is that ash modifies the chainsaw so that now it's on his hand he had a, st- a bloody stump this entire movie he now has a chainsaw arm and then he goes off and he saws off the shotgun. I think is that what he, is that what it's called? What he does? Because he like takes off two barrels so that the shotgun's really short now. Yeah, it's a it's a sawed off shotgun, and he so he wears the shotgun on his back, and then he has the chainsaw for one of his hands. Yes, and I want to say after he saws off the shotgun, that's when he says the iconic line of "Groovy." Yes, that is when he says uh, "Groovy" is after he gets his his makeover. Yes, and it's like a full-on close-up shot of his face, groovy, and that's it. <laughs> and then it cuts yeah, it, to him. It slow-mo zooms in on his face, and he says groovy. Yeah. So then this is when they decide to go find the missing pages. He goes inside the basement. He He's able to find the pages, and then he gets attacked by Henrietta, and then that's when she... Um, she turns into that a weird long neck monster that I mentioned. That's when she starts saying, I'll swallow your soul, I'll swallow your soul, I'll swallow your soul. Um, and then when the, when the, when he's fighting her, that's when the daughter... So earlier on, on in the movie, in order to fuck with her, she was like singing a song. And right before, right when she's fighting Ash, the daughter does a song back and that stops her for a bit. And that's what ends up getting her killed. Yes. Yes. All right. Just to, Just to confirm... <laughs> Correct, a hundred percent correct. Yes. Um. So, they start reading the rest of the page, but then I'm, I forget. Is it during the reading or is it right before? The suddenly the cabin starts just like getting destroyed. Uh, she finishes the first page, but at, at between the first and the second one, the full on demon starts attack. Like the full tree demon mm-hmm. starts attacking the cabin. Oh, okay. And then when she's reading the second one, that's when it shows up. Uh, she starts reading the second incantation, and then she ends up being interrupted because the Ash's hand has taken the dagger and has stabbed her in the back. Um, uh, and then when she's like, as she's dying, she's finally able to read the incantation, and then she dies. Uh, and then a giant, a giant whirlpool torpex basically draws Ash and everything in the basic area into this giant, um, um, 
into this giant like wormhole type thing. Yeah, it's like a it's like a portal. Yeah. So they go inside. Uh, this includes this car. I think this is important. Ash's car has also been put into the wormhole. Um and so Ash and the whatever deadites are inside the wormhole and Annie dies and then the incantation is finished and then next time you see Ash in his Oldsmobile it's like the 1300s and he's confronted by a whole bunch of knights who think he's a deadite and then a deadite shows up um uh, a, a a real deadite shows up and then he's able to kill it really easily uh, with the shotgun, and then everyone treats him as a hero, and they're like, you're gonna save us all! And then he starts breaking down as he sees all these people cheer him as he goes like, oh no, <laughs> it's still going! Yeah, yeah, he, he has like a, oh my god, I'm still here moment. Yeah, he has a real good, like, this is not over, because it's just like literally a whole bunch of knights, and everyone's like, you're gonna be the savior, you're gonna help us! Well, and you know, they they kind of tease it earlier, because uh, they're Annie and him are looking at the Necronomicon pages, and he's like, "What is this?" And it's a it's a drawing of a guy with a chainsaw hand. And she was like, "Yeah, they said that this was the man who fell from the sky to defeat the evil." And Ash was like, "Well, he didn't do a very good job, did he?" <laughs> and then it's totally him in the book because he gets sent back in time, realizing that he's the guy who never did a very good job, and that he's <laughs> the guy that didn't save the day properly. Yeah. And that is the end of Evil Dead 2. That is a very quick run through. Um, for better plot summary, you should actually just watch Evil Dead 2 because I went up when I went through it very quickly and trying to not get as much things as I can because we're going to talk about it more here. Um, so Zen, as this is your first time seeing it, how do you feel about it? I can't tell if it's like the dumbest movie ever or a fucking masterpiece. Like <laughs> I. I don't know. It, I, I, it was really good. Um, so many times where like I, there was legitimate scary like like tension, and then Scooby Doo, and both were good. Like they, I was never looking at it like ah, this is dumb. Can we get back to like like it was always good the whole time. Yeah, um... I, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. It was. Yeah, I, I really love it's an eighties movie. So yes, it's like, eh, blah, blah, blah. But, like, it, it was really good. Yeah. Uh, Evil Dead 2 is, I think, the best blend of Evil Dead 1 and Army of Darkness. So, Army of Darkness leans more towards, um, uh, I guess, more of the silly, like, Looney Tunes style action and less of the horror. Um, but Evil Dead 1, if you ever see Evil Dead 1, if you first of all, if you're going to see these movies, you have to start with 1, because once you see 2, it will ruin 1 for you. <laughs> because Evil Dead 1 is almost. <laughs> sequel it's almost like a it's like a more comedic thing yeah it's a it's like a basically like it's really weird it the best way i could see it is like you do you remember when uh, some manga artists do this where they make a really rough one shot and they're like this is what i kind of want and then someone says what if you make that better and then they're like okay that's what evil dead 2 is like evil dead yeah, 1 is a of. It's a very good rough draft, and this is the, basically the final product where it feels like um, they made a movie that is so unlike any other horror movie of the time, uh, specifically of the 80s, because you have to remember this is around the time of like stuff like you know Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, and this is just nothing like those. Oh, not even close. Uh, um, not that that's bad. No, of course not. I'm not saying that anything. It also has some of the greatest and silliest stop motions <laughs> effects ever oh my god yeah it it very much was reminiscent of a nightmare before christmas for me yeah. like when the the deadites are dancing and everything i was like that strong jack skellington vibes out of that oh yeah um <laughs> it, yeah and here's another great thing. If you haven't, uh, if I have not said this before already, this is directed by Sam Raimi. This is the same guy who did Spider-Man too. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> um, and it's funny enough is that I remember being a big fan of Evil Dead, and then when he went into like, there's a very clear like break in his style when he hit Spider Man, where he kind of stopped doing the horror movie stuff. <laughs> and I was always like, oh, that's unfortunate, but it's fine because Spider Man Two is so good. But also, I really wish he went back to doing this kind of stuff because there's nothing really like it. Um, 
So you can really kind of see it like one of the most, um, I guess the number one. If you ever wondered who was that guy in Spider-Man 1 who said like, kid, that's a dumb name. Like what was the like a Spider-Man Sam Bruce Campbell? It's because of his work in Evil Dead One, Two, and Army of Darkness. Um, ah. He, sorry, say it again. Isn't Bruce Campbell in all three of the Spider-Man movies? Yes, he is, and that's because he's in every Sam Raimi movie because Sam Raimi loves Bruce Campbell, and he should because Bruce Campbell is he kind of like is able to act by himself. Campbell kind of is this movie for sure. Um, yeah. Even when other characters come in, there's not like super great or compelling. It's mostly just Bruce Campbell doing mm-hmm. really, really great shit. Yeah. Like the fucking scene where he's laughing and he's in hysterics and he's freaking out and like then then he shoots the door, or the scene where he's fighting his own hand and he's just constantly smashing plates over his head. <laughs> yes. Um, every single fight that he ever does, like every like um, every one liner that he has, like every like every that's the reason why like no other person can just say the word groovy and sell it, but just the way that he's been through that entire movie, and for him to deliver like this one line after he's basically been armed up to the teeth and he just says groovy, it's the most like there's just something about that character that he sells so well that is like obviously without Ash there is no Evil Dead really. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, not even close. Uh, I, I think the best parts of the movie were the, the early parts where it's just him in the cabin. Yeah. And like, it really... trying to figure some shit out and just basically... He's not even really trying happened. He's just trying not to die. Like, there's no... I gotta find a book and read these pages. And not that, like, the plot was bad or anything, but, like, I, I kind of enjoy that it's just him fucking dealing with this demon. And it's going back and forth between, like, scary fucking scenes where the girlfriend is trying to kill him to he's flopping around on the floor on his own smashing plates over his head trying to fight his possessed hand yeah and of course the the laughing scene when it happens when when that deer when you when he looks at that deer and that deer is possessed by like a dead eye and it's just laughing at him like the the great thing about that scene is that no one there is trying to kill him they're just laughing at him just fucking with him yeah like literally he has a lot of mental break like moments in the beginning that go away when the other characters come mm-hmm. like uh he he goes to a mirror and he's looking at himself in the mirror and he's like all right i'm okay i'm okay and then his reflection comes out of the mirror and starts choking him he's like are you really okay we, we killed our girlfriend like, all this shit and then it zooms back out and he's actually choking himself yeah and he realizes it and then like there's another one that i, I i'm not placing it right now oh yeah the rocking chair is rocking on its own and he goes over to stop it, and then it stops on its own, and he, like, drops the gun on the ground and just starts freaking the fuck out, because this is all this shit's happening to him. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's, I think, Ash is, like, the ultimate, like, like, it's hard to explain what kind of hero he is, because he's not really a hero. He's just a guy who badly wants to get rid of this terrible night. He doesn't even really want to, like stop the demon for like justice or anything he just wants to not die yeah and so that's what he's doing is he's fighting the, the fucking demon to live and that's why that ending is so hilarious is because it's the culmination of just like like uh, like in a in a regular type of hero movie like that kind of moment would be the hero just silently like looking on as he realizes like oh god like maybe I was maybe I was meant for something greater than what I am. It's Ash, but with Ash, it's just him going like, "Oh God, <laughs> it doesn't stop, please." He's just extremely upset. He's like screaming, like they're all saying, "Like hell, hell!" Like cheering him on, and he's just standing there screaming "No" into the sky. <laughs> And and from that point on, it kind of like obviously some other stuff is eventually fleshed out where like he's um. He is basically the reluctant hero. He never wants... He, the only thing Ash wants is to literally be with his girlfriend and kind of work at his uh, supermarket job. And that's all he wants in life. And the Deadites constantly stop him from ever trying to live a normal life. He's the last person in the world who wants to have any form of responsibility. So the idea that the entire world is on his hands is like something that he's not for. But thankfully something like... Um, and it really shows in this movie. Um, just because of the way he acts and stuff, man, I, 
I could go on and on about Evil Dead 2 because it's fantastic. I think I've described I said I described it to you as a Looney Tune ass movie. <laughs> Yeah, it it very much is. Um, It's one of those movies, because, like, again, there are horror moments where I was actually like, wow, that's pretty spooky. There's tension going on. Shit feels serious. And then they'll have... It's funny, The I always pull up the Wikipedia entry before we talk about this, so I have, like, actors' names and stuff in front of me. Mm -hmm. Um, And they refer to this as, quote-unquote, slapstick gore. And that's, like, the perfect (laughs) summary of what it is. Yeah, that is because um, there's no way we can accurately describe how much blood is shed in this movie. It's so much when that little hole when he's looking at it and it just like literally spews blood at him. <laughs> yeah, because like it's bleeding a little bit, and he thinks like, "Oh, I hit it. You know, it's it's bleeding because I shot it." And then like it progressively starts bleeding more and more until it literally shoots like a fire hose of blood out of the wall on him, right down to him. And they never stop with the blood effects. Like, even after he's killed um, his girlfriend or anyone else, like, the blood never... If you want the perfect mix of blood and disgusting, this is the kind of movie for you. Yeah, because, like, it's it's over the top and to the point where, like, it is kind of comedic after... Like, when the hillbilly guy gets killed in the... by the mom. And it's just, like more more blood than you could get out of 10 human bodies yeah it's kind of like when you did the mortal Kombat fatality where you did a, a sub-zero uppercut and you uppercutted three heads off it's, yeah, kinda, it's exactly like that and that's kind of what it feels like for evil dead uh, evil dead 2 it's just like non-stop um blood like and to the point where the blood is kind of like hilarious but also there's still moments of tension where the movie is actually a legitimate horror movie but it's because it's such a weird blend that you always like you're never sure what version of the movie you're gonna get <laughs> yeah there's never a point where you like know what's about to happen because at any point it could be a, a legitimately scary scene of the demon like about to fucking do some shit or it could be they're giggling and like the walls start laughing and ash starts freaking out yeah and there's uh, the another. I think another. I really liked it when the mom turned back human for a bit and then just started singing the song. Like they treat it like such as like a like a okay, what the hell is going on here? Because everyone, all the characters aren't reacting to anything. They're just like looking at her singing, and then they, and then when she starts to be like, okay, maybe I can let her out. He's like, no, no. What are you? What are you doing? Don't don't go anywhere near her. Don't be yeah, stupid. Well, because at that point. Um that knows they can do that yeah but if a person who didn't know then she would just assume all oh, like my mom's okay but like no that's that's them specifically trying to fuck with you because for whatever reason the yeah. deadites aren't satisfied with just killing you they want to break you and then kill you yeah they like they spend a lot of, they're like um a lot of what the old school depiction of, of demons are where they're not just like murder monsters but like they want to torment you and like fuck with you the whole time yeah yeah up until you can't handle it anymore and they really do it's funny enough is that out of all of them the two people who could handle it the most were the ones that end up living but the ones who were immediately like freaked out and scared they were just killed off immediately like bobby joe like the second she freaked out they're like well we got everything we needed out of her so let's just take her out now she's just dead i noticed they averted the uh famous weird uh trees one which was nice oh yeah so they um again i really do love evil dead and um if there's one scene to regret in the original evil dead it is the fact that uh, also in the remake it is also in the remake so if you're watching the remake know that they kept that in even though you can't get away even though specifically (laughs) sam raimi said it's the one scene he regrets in the entirety of evil dead um, there's a part where a woman is raped by a tree, and thankfully yeah, evil, a demon tree, a demon tree, and that is the catalyst that starts the whole movie in Evil Dead One. And for Evil Dead Two, they decided that I think it's enough to just have a killer tree. <laughs> They're like, I yeah, think I think the tree can just murder her, and then we're good. Yeah, so I that's another reason why I can easily go back to Evil Dead Two. Thought they were going there. I started like ripping her clothes and shit, and I was like, oh god, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're we're going down this avenue. 
but uh, it didn't. It just like dragged her, and she died. Yeah, and it was like thank thank God he he actually said like all right we're not gonna we're not gonna do this tree thing again. I kind of learned not, my lesson. We're not doubling down on the tree. <laughs> no, thank God. Uh, so I really do think that in every conceivable way, Evil Dead Two is better than evil dead one and that's again my own personal opinion on it and this also comes from someone who really likes looney tune who really likes horror movie this is almost almost the perfect horror movie for me because it has everything that i like in it in one thing (laughs) yeah i uh i haven't seen in a very long time but i would also probably do more i don't remember the original one really sticking out to me like as a good good movie or something that i enjoyed but evil dead 2 was fun i i enjoyed that a lot the the effects in evil dead 1 still hand are still great there's some really good like do you remember the ending sequence of evil dead 1 where that guy it's basically you watch a a man um a skeleton disintegrate in like oh yeah that it's, was fucked up. It is real fucked up. That's why I'm saying, like, Evil Dead 1 still has its merits, and it's especially in the effects. There's just some parts of it where you're just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> this is just gross. I think uh, this one actually had, like, for its time, decent effects. Like, they were cheesy, but kind of felt, like, intentionally so. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think that the, the effects in this were pretty good, too. Yeah. For this- what it was. This is one of those movies where you understand what people say when they say um, cheesy stop motion is better than bad CGI. It is it? Is. Well, because cheesy stop motion, like I don't know if personality is the wrong. Well, maybe it is. I, I think it has like a certain amount of charm to it. Mm-hmm. That that's some shit that some dude like. There's literally a scene of his decapitated girlfriend just fucking with him. And, like, doing elaborate dances with her head rolling around on her arms and, like, falling off and stuff. And it's all done in super funky stop motion, like, obvious stop motion stuff. Like, it looks like a Disney stop motion. Mm. And then uh, all I can think of is how much better that is than, like, giant computer-generated spaceships. Yeah, it's true. And this is also coming from someone who specifically has worked in CGI and done that like specific 3d thing i think the main thing is that when it comes to stop motion you always have to remember even when it's bad it's someone literally doing it hand by hand by himself the the process of stop motion is literally so crazy dumb to actually do it's borderline a dead art (laughs) like there's Think of how miserable it would be. It is like when everyone, because uh, a lot of people I assume that watch you are like anime fans. Mm-hmm. So, you know, every time someone talks about, wow, this cut of an anime or whatever, imagine having to do that with a fucking action figure instead of drawing. Yeah, and then making it look good. And fucking moving it and then taking a picture and moving it and then making it not suck. If if you ever want to know how hard it is, there was specifically, there's a DVD extra on the King Kong Peter Jackson movie where they asked him so in the original kong movie um the 1931 which was stop motion there was a scene where they fought a spider and it was it it was basically lost footage because um he so the guy who did it i want to say it was harryhausen i can't 100 percent remember but he animated that he fully stop motion animated this and it's extremely a hard thing to do So for the extra, Peter Jackson basically said, we have some of the best special effects artists. Let's see if we can recreate that ourselves in stop motion. And then it's basically them going halfway into it going, this is a process. (laughs) This feels impossible. (laughs) Yeah, it's insane. (laughs) Yeah, and that was one guy doing it back then. And them and (laughs) Peter Jackson with some of the best CGI artists in the world working together um, at least – over 10 people were like we don't know how the fuck to do this (laughs) like this is impossible uh, you're right that it's basically a dead art i can't think of anything that uses stop motion anymore there is only there's only one person there's only one studio that still uses uh stop motion and those are the people who do kubo and the six strings and Coraline. Coraline, another fantastic uh horror movie as well um it is more of a kid-friendly one but a horror movie nonetheless they're the only animation studio that still does full on stop motion. And then there's no, there's another one. There's the people who do um, the Wallace and Gromit. Those are the two people that come to mind. I didn't know people still made Wallace and Gromit stuff. 
so not specifically Wallace and Gromit. That company still goes. You remember that pirate movie where everyone has taken that one thing where he says yes, but actually no? Like, the only yeah. thing that has really survived from that movie that is a good Yeah, the movie, only relevant thing from that. Which is, this is not me shitting on that movie, by the way. It's a good movie. That's the only thing that survived from it, though, as far as, like, the West is concerned. Um, they still do animated, like, the Shaun the Sheep. But those are basically the only two studios, and they're all animated. There's no, like, actual stop motion in, like, live action anymore, which is a shame. Uh... And also, if you want to, if you want to make a real double feature of like the greatest cheesy stop motion effects and some of the most horrifying, watch Evil Dead Two, and then right next to it, watch The Thing, because The Thing was <laughs> criticized for being too good in its stop motion to the point of like, I think that you actually just murdered people. <laughs> this is disgusting. Ah, but that's Evil it's Dead. Also a good movie. Yes, the the thing is also a fantastic film. Other time, but it is also a good movie. Yeah, uh, yes. So that is Evil Dead 2. Um, you should go watch Evil Dead 2. I'm actually going to say before this episode comes out, people will have exactly one day, but whatever, it's on Hulu. Um, if you watch the movie to prepare for this, or you just heard us and are like, maybe I should see Evil Dead 2, you should see Evil Dead 2. Um, it's fantastic. There's no... Not very people... long either. It's not a huge commitment. It's like an hour and a half. Yeah, because it was made back when movies were allowed to be an hour and a half. Yeah, back before a movie had to be three hours. Do you know... Okay, so this is a little bit off topic, but I watched the original Men in Black uh, yesterday. Do you know how long that movie is? Original Men in Black? Yeah. What, like, can't be any more than two hours. It's an hour and a half. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, fantastic movie, hour and a half, yet somehow the new one had to be over two hours long. Yeah, at this point, I feel like people just go for a runtime regardless. Like, a lot of movies don't need to be as long as they are. No, it's true. They need hardcore editing. Um, but yeah, that's Evil Dead 2. You should check it out. That's what we say here on Concession Stand. We don't have any sort of rating system, but if me and Zen can agree on this, I'll say this is a much better uh, pick for both of us compared to Haosu last year, even though <laughs> we liked Haosu for how weird it was. This is, uh, I would say, American Haosu, except for it's more... It, uh... it is in many ways an American Haosu, but it's actually a good movie. Like This is yeah. something that I would recommend that you go and watch. Yeah. Whereas Haosu, I would say, I like this movie. I'm still not 100% sure if it's good. <laughs> I don't know if it's... I would sign off on Haosu being not good, in fact. It's a hell of an experience. I just... <laughs> not to get too much back into Haosu. Haosu, again, that was a, a horror movie that Japan as a nation went to go see, made a lot of money, and then immediately were like, why did we give this money? We can't... We can't... Perhaps, yeah, perhaps this should no says all of japan yeah all of japan tried to bury Hausu, <laughs> and then unfortunately criterion was like uh-uh we're putting this up here <laughs> we're putting this bitch over if, here in the states if all of if, if all of japan hates it we gotta keep it around exactly so yeah that's evil dead too and now of course it can't be a spooktacular unless of course zen also gets uh to choose a horror movie so why don't we go into a preview of our next coming attraction. Zen, why don't you tell the people what you want to see for the next concession? So this series? is not a traditional what people think of when they think of a horror movie. Mm -hmm. But I double-checked that it does count as one, just so I'm not breaking the rules. And because I really want to watch this movie, and I think it would be good for the show, is uh, Jaws. Oh. Yeah, I would consider that a horror movie. It, it is listed officially as a suspense thriller. Let me, t uh, mm, um, okay, I'm going to get get my soapbox. I'm going to, okay, put it right here. Hollywood has a problem with admitting horror movies is good <laughs> because the second that. Yeah, oh, yeah, they do. The second a horror movie is too good, they go, oh, that's a suspense thriller. When it's like. It's, yeah, suspense thriller pretty much just means horror at this point anyway. <laughs> yes. Like what? Excuse me. Uh, a person who decides this, what is in a horror movie? Th a suspense thrills why isn't jaws a horror movie uh because it's too good <laughs> because it's too yeah, good for because the... it was too good and too successful exactly soapbox gone <laughs> i've i've had to carry that burden google, a very long time. if you google horror movies and it has that giant list at the top and you keep scrolling jaws is almost right next to evil dead 2 so i'm counting it <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
uh, I want to say the. I think it's you know again soapbox back. I want to say the only two recognized horror like one hundred percent. This is a horror movie that were ever recognized by something like the Oscars were The Exorcist, which was too scary to ignore, and then the other one was Get Out. Those are the two, and then the rest have always been categorized as suspense thrillers. That's a shame. Yeah. Well, horror, I think, is is horror is weird though because it's such a. I don't know if broad is the right word, but like, there's a lot of stuff that constitutes the horror genre that isn't necessarily like well done or tasteful or interesting. So I can see why the big wigs who like are mostly about think pieces and shit, yeah. like Saw, no one's gonna look at that and be like, oh man, that was like some. Wow. <laughs> What right. amazing, well done. Like, it's torture porn. Like, a lot of horror movies these days are torture gore porn. Mm. And even though this movie had buckets of human blood violently shoved out of walls and stuff, it never felt like that. Yeah, that's fair. I will also say, again, to come to bat for Saw real quick, that's one of the very few, like, um, ep- episodic uh, anything <laughs> that has ever existed in movies for a very long time. A lot of people will be like, uh, oh yeah, the Marvel movies all kind of follow some form of a timeline. Saw is literally just like Saw one happened here, Saw two, Saw three takes place kind of in between Saw two and all this other stuff. Saw four is like one continuing story over and over and over again. It's kind of crazy that they were. I I kind of wish they were better, but it is crazy that they were actually trying to do something story wise where they're just like, what if we just kind of like continued the story and actually had like a through line of continuity as opposed to something like friday the 13th where at the end of it jason is a tiny boy in the water and then in the next movie he's a big ass manhattan baby (laughs) yeah then eventually he's taking manhattan (laughs) oh dang man okay so next so the next coming attraction will be jaws so everyone get ready do you know where jaws is available at i want to say it has Um... to be available everywhere (laughs) in 1975 i can't imagine that it's um looks like it's on prime video all right i have that so we're good so join us next time as we talk about jaws and i think hopefully that will go up on your channel right yes so look forward there until next time everyone always remember to support your local concession stand i bet you thought i was gonna forget i am pointing my finger forward (laughs) even though nobody could see me pointing my finger forward (laughs) i still did it it's still you all of you imagine him doing it because he's talking about you exactly uh so remember always support your local concession stand for us that means specifically leave a like leave a comment share do all that good (laughs) stuff and until next time everyone goodbye bye